and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the Craftsman Table Saw Digital Readout Gauge. This is item number 22575. This was purchased recently off eBay. I don't think Sears has actually sold these in store in quite a while, but you can find these relatively cheap on eBay. And I think from what I can tell, this looks like a very fascinating product for being able to look up some angles on your table saw. And I got mine for something about $16 with free shipping. So I thought that was like an outstanding deal. And similar dial or uh, digital gauges like this, you know, retail for $30, $25, $35 or a little more, a little less. And so I thought for $15 or $16 bucks with free shipping, let's give it a shot. So let's start by looking at seeing what you get in the packaging. And that opened pretty easily. So first of all, it comes with two batteries. These are CR2032 batteries. It looks like there's Japanese writing on them. Okay, so we got two of those. Up top, we've got some instructions tucked away in the readout guide. This mentions that this could be used with a couple specific models of table saws with Trunnion style systems. We'll put the directions aside for just a moment. The first thing in front here was just a little placeholder showing you what it might look like. Kind of a joke. All right, now we've got the actual digital readout part here. It's got an on-off button, a zero. I don't think there's any batteries in here, and you can see on the back where you would open this up to put the batteries. It does not come with the batteries in it, but the batteries were included, so that's good. And then coming off the side, we've got our cable here, and this has a unique five pin connector and that's actually supposed to run inside your table saw so here's another little spacer and a silica packet don't feel, uh, let those get around small kids and then we've got a couple of brackets here and so then this also has a cord on it and so then my understanding is that this is actually supposed to then mount on your table saw and you've got the option a couple different brackets here you can see the size or you could bolt them together and try to find them out inside your table saw. So then this actually will then report back to here what the angle is after you zero it out. We've got our mounting hardware here and some adhesive, or uh, two-sided adhesive tape. One thing of note on this readout unit at the top, there are three magnets. So this is designed to be mounted to the front of your saw via the magnets. So there's no screwing, you just magnetically attach it to the top. And this is referred to in the instructions as a sending unit. And it's supposed to be attached somewhere, it's just out of reach. And then you connect these two cables together. And if you've got the right saw, you might even be able to use uh, these bolts that you can use to attach these together. Just like this around the arbor. I'm going to be attempting to add this to my Porter Cable PCB 270TS contractor table saw. This is the same style saw that uh, if you ever see Steve Ramsey's Woodworking for Mere Mortals, he uses the same saw. And a bunch of other people on YouTube have the same saw. It's no longer sold. It's not a craftsman, but I think this should work for many other similar saws and even uh, some lower models. All right, so now on to setting this up at the saw. To install the sending unit on the table saw, a couple tools you're going to need. One is you're going to want a small ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket. I went with a flex head ratchet. This one here has a nice little bit of extra reach and allows me to kind of get this out of the way of the gearing underneath my table saw. So this was a good choice for me. You may be able to get away with a 3 8 ratchet. All depends, but you're going to want something with a 10 millimeter socket and you're going to want some form of a pick to be able to grab at the receiving line coming through to make sure you get the two ends coupled together. And the other thing that you're going to need for this, which I don't have shown here, is some form of a replacement battery. The two batteries that came with mine were dead and I had to go to the store and buy a new replacement energizer battery. Had some errors on the screen and it wasn't working right. Placed a battery, everything was fine and back in business and ready to mount. So let's go over to the saw. So here's the front of my table saw. You can see over here, let me just make sure this is very clear. It is unplugged. Do not be messing with this if it's plugged in. And then I've got my receiving unit here. A couple things I noticed is that the magnets seem to want to pop off. I need to add some super glue to connect those back together. And then without having to drill any holes, there was enough space underneath the main cast iron table. 
and this front gray housing for me to snake this wire through. I suppose you could drill a hole if you wanted to. One of the other little nuances here is it seems like because of the aluminum on this fence right here, it won't stick there. So you can use a double stick tape to hold it up there or a double stick tape and a piece of metal so you can magnetically attach it there. For now, it's just going to live here for me and then when I need it, I can just flip it over and take a look at it. And so now let's go under the saw and take a look at what we see when we're looking up at how I have this connected. All right, so now I'm underneath the table saw here. I've got a light up here to hopefully make this show up a little bit better. Right up front here is where my connection that goes to the front handle is. That allows me to adjust the bevel from zero to 45 degrees. And so I've got this wire slooping over the top. And so this is actually on the back side. You can see where I, I connected the two pieces across with my 10 millimeter sockets or the 10, mm, 10 millimeter bolt heads tightened down, the process tightened down, did actually deflect the metal here holding the sending unit. And so we got that squeezed together. Now it's important on this saw, which does tilt to the left, when you're on the top, that this is actually where the gap is here, as opposed to flipping around the other way. Otherwise it'll report a negative reading, because the gauge will show either a positive 45 or a negative 45. And since this saw only tilts one way, as most table saws do, it needs to go in this way, and the directions are not very clear about that aspect of how this installs. I had to learn that with a little bit of just tough luck. And so I got that bolted together. Then I had to pull down the wire here, just to be able to snake it through and connect it. This just snaps right together. You also probably want some safety glasses on while you're underneath your table saw. And you may want just a little black zip tie Rather tight, we'll tie this cable off if you want. I'm just going to leave it loose for now. I think there's enough slack here to keep this free of the uh, mechanism. Now that I'm out from underneath the saw, here we go. You can see we've got this mounted here. I end up putting Velcro on the top there so I can just peel it off and then just stick it right up. So now I use this, I'll turn this on and then it'll show where it thinks the blade is. And so this is thinking it's starting off here at 0.09. And so then I can apply the crank here and turn this. And now that shows it's at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You can see it jump there. But if you wanted to remember it, you can always come back and then zero it out like that. And, that's, and now that's my new zero. And so now if I go back the other way, you can see it's showing negative. We're going the other way from that new reference point. It's going positive. And so we can use that as a relative referencing. And now I just need to come back and actually re-square it out again uh, for what I'm doing. Now one of the things that I think is a little bit quirky with this is if your saw is not completely level, you can have some funky business. So my garage floor is not perfectly level. So if I move my saw around, or I adjust the base, I could be adjusting and or end up adjusting or affecting the uh, tilt of the table relative to the floor. And so let me just put this on zero here and show you what I'm talking about. Sorry, I turned it off. So now that's at zero. Now I'm going to turn the saw. It's unplugged right now. And then now by turning the saw, it now says it's at point oh, uh, negative 0 0.06, 0 0.01. So it's definitely relative to the way the saw is squared to the floor and it's not remembering everything completely with respect to the arbor except for at the point that you have it zeroed out. So just bear that in mind as you're using this or other similar ones to check for that. And I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Please give this a thumbs up, like it, share it, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you back here for another video. Have a great day. Bye.